Moin, hallo, servus, good up, welcome back to the channel everyone, I am Ace, that's me, and yeah, coming to you right now from Western Canada, and today we're checking out top 10 German war films. I, I think war films are really important and really interesting pieces of art. If I had to just name war films, if you put me on the spot right now, which is what I'm going to do, I'm going to put myself on the spot and think of some war films. Let's go. Number one, Paths of Glory by Stanley Kubrick. Number two, Saving Private Ryan, Steven Spielberg. Number three, Apocalypse Now, Francis Ford Coppola. Number four, Platoon, Oliver Stone. I'm actually not that familiar with that one. Um, but it's just one that gets brought up a lot when people talk about war movies. Number five, Full Metal jacket stanley kubrick um so yeah those are all those are all american films right yeah so that's just five that i thought up on uh just on the top of my head and i need to watch all quiet on the western front i know it's on uh it's a german film that came out on netflix recently which is uh an adaptation of the novel by german novelist eric I can't remember his last name, but um, a very evocative and important work uh, surrounding a World War One and a soldier in World War One, and just the horrors that uh, they went through. Definitely need to check that one out. Um, Thin Red Line is another good one. That's uh, Terrence Malick, who is a pretty incredible director, actually. I think vastly underrated. Let's just get into this list. I've been rambling. Let's go. And yes, I did get a haircut. In March, we took a look at the best war films to hail from the Soviet Union. This time, we're shifting to the other end of the spectrum and looking at the best war films to come from Germany. We will be doing more videos like this, focusing on films from individual countries, so make sure you hit the subscribe button. Top 10 German war films. Number 10, 13 minutes. Man muss wirklich was machen. Ja, und was? eine Bombe in die Sonderabteilung schmeißen. Es gibt nur tote Arbeiter und die Nazis bauen morgen weiter. Man muss was anderes machen. Und zwar bald. Bald und radikal. 13 Minutes is the true life study of Georg Elser, the carpenter who made a failed attempt on the life of Hitler in Munich in 1939. The film features an excellent performance from Christian Friedel as Elsa himself, and it is structured confidently, if conventionally, around flashbacks after Elsa is arrested, sketching in his rural Catholic background his instinctive non-party leftism and his unhappy affair with a married woman. Man muss machen, was richtig ist. Wenn der Mensch nicht frei ist, stirbt alles ab. If humanity isn't free, everything dies with it. Well. Yeah. Number nine, the captain. Das ist too really interesting uh, aesthetic with the black and white. Schön. The Captain is based on the bizarre true story of Willy Herold, a German deserter who while on the run chanced upon a Luftwaffe captain's uniform, dressed up in it and passed himself off as an officer of that rank. The movie shows how almost everyone more or less suspects the truth about the phony captain, but goes along with the deception. Danke. Danke. Number 8, West Front 1918. Whoa. G.W. Pabst brought the war movie into a new era with his first sound film, a mercilessly realistic depiction of the nightmare that scarred a generation in Germany and beyond. Digging into the trenches with four infantrymen stationed in France in the final months of the First World War, Pabst illustrates a harrowing ordeal as a battle with Certainly makes me uh, just aesthetically think of Pass of Glory a little bit, which is a fantastic anti-war film and deals with just these absolutely callous and the these generals that have a utter disregard for human life and wish to just send men essentially to the to their deaths uh because they can and they should follow orders right and uh kirk douglas's character attempts to stand up for them but uh yeah beautiful film and this looks really interesting too i i, I need to track some of these down with unprecedented naturalism
Number wow. seven, The Tin Drum. Based on one half of Gunter Grass's highly acclaimed 1959 novel, the film about war's madness, and also a Best Foreign Language Film Academy Award winner, was perceived through the eyes of young Oskar Mazerat, who lived in the free city of Danzig on the Polish-German border. At the age of three, he received a tin drum for his birthday, and then after an accident, willed himself not to grow any further, as Danzig was affected by war and Nazi occupation. Number six, Europa Europa. The Tin Drum, I do remember seeing that on another uh, cinema list we did. Europa Europa is based on the 1989 autobiography of Solomon Perel, a Jewish-German boy who escaped the Holocaust by masquerading as a Nazi German. The film tells a brilliant story and deservedly won the 1992 Golden Globe Award for Best Foreign Language Film. Number 5, Cross of Iron. Whoa. A probe, sir? It's an avalanche! Damn. Oh, sir. It's an attack in a force! Whilst an American director, Sam Peckinpah's war film, based upon the 1959 autobiographical novel The Willing Flesh, is a British-German co-production, with the majority of finance ailing from West Germany. Using the backdrop of the Eastern Front conflict between Germany and Russia, the film was decidedly anti-war and against the cruel effects of war and its story of class conflict in the ranks. The central figure was Germany platoon leader Sergeant Steiner, played by James Coburn, an officer- Coburn, classic Western. Uh... I always remember him from amazing Western movies and also other Peckinpah films, I believe. Um, Peckinpah, <whistles> some crazy films in his filmography. So he was tired of the war and contemptuous of the cruel actions of his superior officers. <laughs> Number four, Stalingrad. I've heard of this. Whoa. The German point of view anti-war battle drama was released to coincide with the 50th anniversary of the crucial defeat of the Nazi forces in Stalingrad, a turning point of World War II. The grim and somewhat depressing film was made to authentically portray the loss of two million lives on the Eastern Front, when abandoned Nazi troops literally froze and starved to death during the brutal winter. That guy there, he went on to have a really, really successful career, right? You see, you see him pop up in tons of movies. I can't remember his name. Number three, The Bridge. Bernard Wicke's Astonishing The Bridge was the first major anti-war film to come out of Germany after World War II, as well as the nation's first post-war film to be widely shown internationally, even securing an Oscar nomination. Set near the end of the conflict, it follows a group of teenage boys in a small town as they contend with everyday matters like school, girls and parents, before enlisting as soldiers and being forced to defend their home turf in a confused and terrifying battle. Number two, Downfall. There it is. It's the one uh, with the famous meme scene of Hitler at the end in his bunker. Im Süden hat der Gegner Zossen genommen und stößt auf Stahnsdorf vor. Der Feind operiert jetzt am nördlichen Stadtrand zwischen Frohnau und Pankow. Und im Osten ist der Feind bis zur Linie Lichtenberg, Marlsdorf, Karlshorst gelangt. If a story is only as good as its teller, then downfall blows them all away. It tells the story of Adolf Hitler's personal secretary, Trudel Junger, narrated by none other than the real-life woman herself. The story follows Whoa. Hitler from the peak of his power all the way down to the bunker years and through to his final days. The humanizing of Hitler was met with deep hesitation, but producer Bernd Eichinger told the New York Times that the fact that Hitler was a human being is what made him so dangerous, and that's what he wanted to show. Ich war eher von der Akademie. Und doch habe ich allein, allein auf mich gestellt, ganz Europa erobert. Before we reveal on them, gotta say, his performance is electric. For one pick, here are some honorable mentions that just missed the list. Sophie Scholl. Haven't seen that. Signs of Life. 
circle of deceit. Amy and Jaguar. Before the fall. Before the fall, I've seen that on other lists. Number one, Das Boot. Das Boot! I still gotta watch this. I remember when I was younger, my dad always telling me, yeah, Das Boot is like the best German, uh, or the best like war film in this claustrophobic uh, telling of these guys in their submarines. What else could top the list? We'll look at life aboard a World War II U-boat. Das Boot adapts a best-selling German novel by Lothar Gunther Buchheim, drawn from his experiences as a war correspondent embedded with a submarine crew during the Battle of the Atlantic. The movie's opening sets up the force of a military at the height of a war, but this focus soon becomes what it's like to live underwater in dull and terrifying close quarters. Wolfgang Peterson brilliantly uses cramped spaces, the sounds of underwater combat, and the intense performances to create an immersive depiction of submarine service. Thank you for watching. Make you gotta say, like, I wouldn't want to be in any position in the war, but I think I might have, like, a panic attack if I was in a submarine. That was cool, man. I'm definitely gonna have to put this list on uh, my, my list of films that I need to catch up on and watch. War films are highly... They're highly emotional, usually, and they can be quite depressing, but it's cool and interesting when you start delving into kind of what they're trying to say about the human condition and warfare and history and the historical uh, effects of that and what it says about us as societies and, and just people. All right. We will see you all in the next one.